What's good? What's good? What's good? Look! What's happening, man? Look, Moroni! How's it going? And Shu Vang! Thank you so much for tuning in. And I see Nicole is in the house. What's happening? What's happening, people? Well, obviously, this is going to be a fun... <laughs> Ray Rink likes the music. Well, we gotta spice it up a little bit, you know, just so that it's not the same mundane stuff. But apparently somebody commented yesterday and they said, oh, your music is whack. And I was like, Ugh, don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, look, I need to speak to you. I think I have something for you. So if we can get together after this uh, show, um, we can. Robert, thank you so much for tuning in. Alexander Oxford. That's my first time um, hearing this name or seeing it. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Esteban, thank you so much, and Shannon, thank you so much, Michael, what's happening, what's happening, I'm good man, I'm good man, alright guys, everybody else is still coming in, and uh, I'm really excited about today's show, uh, in as much as um, a lot of stuff is going on out there, but I really enjoy that we're sitting on here, and we're trying to create and relate to each other, Ray Rink is sitting by the campfire on the beach watching the show, <laughs> Fantastic. You need to send us photographs later on. Nicole, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nicole. <laughs> you know me, right? So you got to type in what you want me to say. Thank you so much. I love that about you, love. I love that about you. Right. So everybody knows when you come to this show, um, you know that I, I actually believe Everybody that's putting in a lot of work, everybody that's really hustling out there on their online business should be profitable and should enjoy what they're doing. That's my mission every single day to come over here so that we can chat and see how I can actually help you with your businesses so that they, um, you know, they're profitable. And I also want that whatever you're doing, you are also creating content, going out to the people that you're going to be demanding money off of. That's the only way, guys, you're going to be succeeding in this online space. People come to the internet to get information. Now, if your business is the one that's providing that information, guess what happens, all right? But I see a lot of businesses, I talk to a lot of people, um, you know, every single day, and I realize there's, there's some recurring mistakes that people are doing out there, and um, maybe it's it's the, 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 the problem is there's, there's too much content and people are just maybe not really understanding what they're meant to be doing. Is, could that be the case? Is there is there just so much content and there's so much, you know, content saturation that people are now really confused and they're numb and they can't even, um, you know, um, you know, produce any of their own content. They now just, um, you know, stuck with what's out there and hoping that something would happen with their business. All right. I think I think I think that's where the dilemma is. And I want that people that I'm working with are actually also creating their own content. How are people going to know your story? How are people going to know that you exist? Build it and they will come stopped to exist a long time ago, all right? I mean, look, you're right, there's loads of content, but in the midst of it all, how are you making people know what you have to offer? You know, I think that's, that's really something that people should really start taking consideration of. Robert says, just chilling, getting refined on positive energy. <laughs> Great stuff. And Nicole, I'm an hour early because of daylight savings. I think um, Luke has uh, already, uh, um, you know, um, explained to you that. So in today's show, I really, really want us to look at you know, all the sort of mistakes that small businesses are making in and around their work, all right, and not realizing that it is those things that are actually putting them down. I mean, at the end of the day, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I do talk to a lot of people every single day, four or five different businesses, and then I get to figure out where they are, what they're doing, and in, in the middle of me talking to them, we can either record a video, or we can either actually help them by actually helping them with their business. Alan, thank you so much for tuning in, man. All right, so I'm not saying my way is the, is, is the right way, or I'm not saying that what you're doing is wrong, but what I'm really trying to do is 
guide the people that are around me, guide the people that are with me so that they too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I'm working towards a willable business, something I can turn over or something I can hand over to my kids. I'm hoping that's the same thing that you want too. All right. But at any given time, at any one other time or another, you know, virtually everyone thinks of starting a business. But at the end of the day, do you actually know what you are going to be doing and for whom? Do you actually know what product or service you're going to be serving and who actually needs that service? Yeah. Because this, the, the, the allure of being your own boss can be so strong. You know what I mean? You might just be frustrated about, um, you know, your, 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 your last employer. Or you might be frustrated with the way, um, you know, the, the, the culture that's at your present work right now. But does that entice you or does that mean you should go on and start your own business? The one thing you should remember while you're launching your own business, it's, it's a risky endeavor. You have to make sure you, for, you forget everything you've ever known and you really put in, you know, you, you roll your sleeves and you go in and start doing the hard work. Yeah. According to statistics, we all know this. There's an SBA report that keeps going on around about 95% of all small businesses. They fail within just five years. Why is that? Have you ever asked yourself, am I just an anomaly? Do I know things more than other people? Yeah. You know, managing your, your, your business by yourself, it means you're the janitor. You're the one that wipes the dust. You're the one that maintains the computers. You have to do everything. But some of us just want to pick and choose what part of the business we want to just do. And that's the reason why the business fails. Do you know what I mean? Managing your own business is like walking on a minefield. You never know what you're going to step onto and then it's going to explode. Especially when, 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 when the whole pool of entrepreneurship is, is, is based on decision making. A lot of us hate making decisions. You even hate, you know, deciding what clothes to wear. Now, do you think, I mean, unless you're Mark Zuckerberg, but do you think if you hate making decisions, you're going to be successful as an entrepreneur? You're going to have to make decision on the color of your website. You're going to have to make decision, um, you know, on, on, on what computer systems you're going to be using. You're going to have to make a lot of decisions. So if you can't make your own personal decisions about how you're going to look, about what you're going to wear, about who you're going to talk to and how you're going to talk to them, how do you think you're going to be able to run a business where people are expecting services and products from you consistently? All right. Not everybody else is cut out to be a, an entrepreneur. The number 55 person at Facebook will probably be better off than people that are, you know, running their own business throughout. So figure out, are you really cut out for this entrepreneurship thing? Or are you just adding more stress onto yourself? Or if it's not that, why don't you partner with other people that are already doing stuff so that you see what are you capable of doing that your um, services or what your, your talent can actually, um, what do you call it? Can, can, um, can uh, give me the word, somebody, can somebody give me the word? What your talent can, can align with what other people are already doing. When you go at it alone, business it's like a jungle, guys. When you go at it alone with no business experience, it will be tough. When you go at it alone with no, um, you know, with, with no other people that actually know what they're doing, it will be tough. All right. But if you decide you want to do it on your own, if you decide you're going to then, you know, go ahead with it. It's a really big idea. It's a great idea to actually learn from other people's mistakes. Ray Ring says, chase the dream. Being a business owner is not a dream. It's a mere path. Exactly. All right. This is the end of the year, guys. The reason why I'm saying this is I really want you to be happy. And if you're going to be trapped in the business, that's not bringing you happiness. That's not bringing you the freedom that you're talking about. That's not bringing you any excitement or joy. Then what good is it? I don't think you actually understand what freedom is. 
All right, because what what you claim you want as freedom, take a, for an instance a train. If a train is going on its tracks, if you take it off its tracks, it becomes free, right? But how far does it go? I must say that again. If if a train is going on the tracks, it's it's going through a stipulated way. Do you know what I mean? It's going through the way that it's carved out for. If you take it off the, the tracks, it becomes free, right? But what happens to it? All right, there's laws. We live in, 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 in a world of dualities. There's give, there's take. There's good, there's bad. There's on, there's off. Do you know what I mean? We live in a world of dualities. Tell me something that doesn't have an opposite right now. So you need to figure out what are you giving in order for you to get? What are you putting out there in order for you to receive? Who are you talking to in order for them to respond? Waking up every single day showing up like this is because I've got to leave something. Otherwise, in the next 10, 15 years, nobody would know I existed. So I'm doing my part. All right? Every single day we're waking up, we, we got to leave, we got to learn, and we got to contribute. Some of us are just living in the leave phase of life. You're not learning anything because you're putting so much on your head that you, you leave no room to breathe. And you're not contributing, and then that's why your life is not fulfilled. I really want you guys to succeed. Like, I totally want that. I don't know why. But I know that I want every single person watching this video right now to actually share their talent, share their prosperity, and share their all the things that they've got. But if it's not the time yet, don't rush it. If it's not what you're meant to be doing, don't rush it. I want you to be happy. Happiness first, and then in the process, figure out what it is that you can do for other people. And in the process, figure out a way to build them. We are not living in the best time in the world, guys. It's, it's so phenomenal that you can wake up and then you can start a business from nothing. I talk to seven-figure earners. I talk to um, you know, you know, people that are homeless. Every one of those people is the same to me. You know why? They're living their why. Because if there's no homeless people, how can rich people know what it is to be homeless? If there's no rich people, how can homeless people know what to aspire for or vice versa? All right? So at the end of the day, you really need to figure out who are you and who needs to know what you have. Are you serving enough people in order for you to constitute yourself as an entrepreneur? And don't forget the main player who is supposed to be satisfied about the things that you're doing. You, yourself. You've got to be sharing your talents. You've got to be creating and relating for those people that you're going to be serving. All right? You might think that I'm all over the place with this one, but if you've got the ears to, to, to hear what I'm actually saying, the eyes to see what I'm talking about, figure out what you're actually passionate about and then just show the world that that is what was given to you and just go out there and do it. I talked about businesses failing. I speak to a lot of businesses every single day. Do you know what I mean? I speak to a lot of people every single day. And the biggest problem is people inaccurately gauge the demand of their product or their service. People don't quite know who actually needs their service. Remember, just because you like jalapeno flavored um, pickled you know, tomatoes or sun-dried tomatoes on a stick. It doesn't mean that everybody likes it. And it doesn't mean that if your uncle from Bujumbura likes the same thing, the whole world likes it. Too many small businesses are failing because the owner or the person who starts them overestimates the demand of their product. You know? They don't quite know who actually needs their service. They're not studying. 
the, 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 the market enough to figure out is their message really needed in the market. And you know what happens? Frustration, addiction, all the bad things that happen because, you know, you are now trying to live up to a standard which you never, which never meant to exist. Scott Kidding, how's it going, brother? Yeah? Like I'm saying, guys, two, and Eric Segura, thanks for tuning in, man. Too many businesses, they fail because the owner is over, uh, you know, is overestimating demand. Is what you're doing meaningful? Do people actually really care about what you're putting out right now? Do people need another book? Do people need another app? Do people need another pen? Is your product really needed in the marketplace? You know? So before launching your venture, find out how strong the demand is for your product or your service. You know? And is the product or the service, um, you know, what a lot of people really want? Because there's a lot of people out there that are peddling stuff that nobody really wants at the moment. Does it fit the current trends? You know? Somebody might want to be opening up a DVD rental shop right now. What good is it going to be when there's Netflix and there's, uh, you know, programs like Stan or live streaming uh, services? Do you see where I'm going with this? Because what used to work yesterday might not be needed in the next 10 years. All right. So before you set up for a business venture, ask yourself if what you're going to be creating, does it actually benefit the, the, the consumer or are you just doing it because you were told that it made money before? Does your, is your customer having sleepless nights because your product doesn't exist in the market right now? You need to test the demand of your product or your service by vetting it with a wide range of people, not just your friends. Because Sally down the road might not even care any less, but your mom doesn't want to hurt your feelings. All right? So you need to actually test it with the people that are going to be paying you. Your friends and family don't cut it. They won't be brutally honest with you. All right, you need to take that product to the market so that people can actually realize if they actually need it or not. There's so many apps that are in your phone right now. How many do you use on a daily basis? There's so many books in your bookshelf. How many are you reading? But mom said it was cool, right? But is mom paying your bills? Maybe she is, I don't know. All right? So, you know, sometimes... Once, once you've entered the market, what is your competitive advantage? What sets you apart from the next person? Robert says, some of your friends may try to keep you for themselves too. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. If my friends are not keeping me for myself. And if also, if you're getting any value from this video, please share it. For me, this is no longer a popularity contest. I, I do my work behind the scenes, but I just would love it if the people that are watching this can also, you know, just share this video, um, you know, as their token of appreciation. Yeah. And Luke says, I'm me. That sets me apart. That's also really good. I'm talking about when you enter a crowded market, what is a distinct, um, distinct competitive advantage that you have? Do you know what I mean? I mean, you may cook the meanest lasagna or you may cook the meanest hamburger or you may cook the meanest pizza or whatever it is. You might have the best omelets in your street. But before you try and build a business around that talent, think of how you're going to distinguish yourself in a world where it's already filled with people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, how are you gonna distinguish your um your 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 pizza house? How are you gonna distinguish your restaurant? How are you gonna distinguish your service? It's important to actually consider factors like: Are you going to be competing on price, on test, on 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 the decoration, or on the ingredients? What are you going to be doing? Service speed? Are you going to be advertising more than the other person? What is going to be setting you apart? And you need to define and articulate that to the customer. All right? You know, without a well-defined competitive advantage or a really compelling why you do it, 
it's tough to compete in this marketplace. You know, it's going to be tough. That's there is what they call a blue ocean strategy. If you throw food or um, you know meat in in a pack of in in a den of lions, they will fight for it, <laughs> fighting for it. You know, but if you throw a cake or a lasagna or whatever it is, they don't eat it. All right, so find out. What is going to set you apart? Find out. Are you the right kind of person who can solve those problems that you are trying to put out there? And Alan, Will uh, Alan Willis, your mission is going to be needed so much. A lot of people are, 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 are going down and then they're, you know, they're, 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 they're subjecting themselves to substance abuse. So you need to start prepping up. It's warm up time for you now. You really have to start going Alan Willis. And Ray Ring says a pizza place, um, a pizza place by me used to cut the pizza at your doorstep to distinguish themselves. That's service. It's an experience. You know why they do that? Because it's an experience. All right. And it, it gives them a competitive advantage. And look at this, Ray. You're talking about them today. And if you've got people around your area, they're going to start looking for that pizza place that actually cuts for the, that actually cuts that pizza in front of you. All right. So, you know. Whether you're building a, a, a business, it typically takes a lot of time, money, and effort for you to establish yourself to become a viable brand. So make sure you have a competitive advantage that makes you stand out. You know, babysit for their kids if it makes a difference. All right? Half of the, half of the things is half of the people normally also forget that it takes money, time, and effort to actually start a business that's profitable and enjoyable. All right? Don't forget to count the cost, guys. Okay? Some of us, you know, we go in, we start taking on all these softwares. We start taking on all these projects. We start taking on all these people that we cannot afford to pay. You know? It becomes a, a big bill and you don't really understand, you know, wh where you're going wrong, but everything seems to be working. In the first couple of days, you're not going to be making money. So don't go in and, and sign up for, um, you know, contracts or things b before you count the cost. Like any other large scale project, guys, building a business or it's, it's not it's not it's not any easier. You know, it's such as like you're building your own house. Successfully launching a business requires you to be thorough and very upfront with what sort of costs you're going to be incurring long term. Do you know what I mean? That's why they say you should have at least six months worth of savings so that you know that your house is well looked after while you're going into ventures. All right. So a lot of undercapitalization or people eating into their savings is one of the top reasons why a lot of businesses would fail. So make sure you've got adequate funding. I mean, we're in business to make money, but make sure you've got enough money for your bills outside that door so that you're not disturbed while you're working. You know? So at the end of the day, you know, before you launch, just make sure you have a detailed budget that actually includes you know, not only your startup costs, but, you know, your living expenses as well. Your car, your housing, if you've got kids, whatever it is, furniture, clothing, all that stuff. Take that into consideration. Yeah, because it will take a long time before your business starts paying you. And Bobby Baskaran, thanks for tuning in, buddy. All right. So, you know, it's 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 really good to make sure that you've got all the living expenses catered for. You've got all your, um, you know, you know, ad hoc expenses that might come in so that you won't be distracted from following your vision and following your dreams. Yeah. And then in the process, make sure, guys, it looks says great point. Um, financial well-being or. You can fail back to the job or you're doing third or second job. Yeah. You want to just give yourself peace of mind. And that's the reason why a lot of people fail because they fail to plan about their living expenses way ahead. All right. And then obviously I know we're all going to be starting new businesses. Half of the time we feel like we have to do everything by ourselves. You know. If you fail to delegate and you, you ignore critical functions, you will miss a few things um, you know, that people can see that you can't see outside of your work. All right? 
I mean, it goes counterintuitive, but at the end of the day, no one person can win a battle by themselves. We're at war here. If you're starting your own business, you are not any different to a general or a football team that's out there playing with opponents. All right? Once you've got your, your, your house uh, fees, you know, your house expenses in order, make sure you also have just a little bit to make, you know, to, 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 to help, to have people that can help you once in a while for certain projects. You're going to need graphic designer. You're going to need website developers. You're going to need, um, you know, people to write your content. You're going to need people to just really um, create stuff for you. And my little girl just walked in. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Okay. In a minute. In any case, guys, i got to go out and do daddy things. But I hope today's video was fantastic. Um, and I really want you to actually start winning, guys. Just make sure you're doing the right things, you're doing what actually works for you, and you're actually doing what you absolutely love. I'm not gonna do and do, go and do what I absolutely love. I don't know if you can see her in the corner there. Say bye bye, Kalia. Oh, she just woke up. In any case, I hope you guys are going to have a fantastic day. I really, really want you guys to win. I really, really want everybody else to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Okay? If there's any questions that you, I can answer for you guys, let me know. And I will be more than happy to help you out. I just really want to make sure that the people I'm working with, they are fully aware of what they're getting themselves into. I'm not trying to scare you. I know it's tough out there. It's just a little bit. If you're not going to be, you know, following through and making these mistakes, then how are you going to learn? All right. We've made the mistakes already. I just want you to actually win. In any case, thank you so much. I've got daddy duties to take care of. Um, in the meantime, if you've got any questions, let a brother know. And thank you so much for um, participating with, with, with us here um, every single day at 2 p.m. AEST. Uh, you just make me proud, guys. In any case, if you like this video today, please share it. And hopefully we meet you guys again tomorrow. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day.